What's up, squad? We back at him again, man, when he thought it was finna end. Thank y'all for riding with me. Well, you know you fell a lot in with your boy Stories with V. Hey, it's time, family. You already know what I need y'all to do for me. Like, share, comment, smash that subscribe button, y'all. Why? Come on now. We on that road to 100K. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Thank you for being here. It's an honor and a pleasure. So listen, sit back, relax. You can take a seat on the bed or copy squad on the toilet seat. I got the rest of the show from here. To that one and only V squad. They know the motto, man. Listen. It ain't no squad like our squad because they don't mob how we mob. So with that being said, we're going to continue to push, mob, put them numbers up, and dominate 2024. It's our year. If you would like to support the channel through Cash App, boom, it's listed right there. If not, please join the membership, man. Exclusive content over there. You do not want to miss out on it. If you would like to come on the show and tell your story or have a story told through V, jump in that comment section right now or DM me on one of my platforms. We would love to have you on. So without further ado, y'all, let's jump into them V mob. Shout out to the day. Number one on the V-Mob list, man. Salute to my Doug, Mr. Do It Twice. Welcome, bro. Welcome. Number two on that V-Mob list, man. Salute to Jump Shot 99. Let's jump shot. Number three on that V-Mob list, man. Salute to Miss Sharon. Miss Sharon, you know what to do. Salute. Number four on that V-Mob list, man. Salute to my Doug, Ivan, Holman. What it do, player? Listen, man. Thank you to each and every one of y'all for joining the family because that's exactly what we all over here, man. A family where we come together each and every day to tell an entertaining story, laugh, chill, vibe, kick it. Take our minds away from whatever we got going on at the time and try to prevent one person from ever spending one night inside that cell. So without further ado, I ain't gonna hold y'all back. Man, meet me over there. We got some breaking news. V-Mob, let's go. Boom. <laughs> What's up, V-Squad, man? You already know what's going on. Listen, we are officially starting a new series. This series is called This Life, uh, uh, part one. Now, this series of This Life will be consisting of a young man named Randy. Now, Randy, during the time that I'm telling you about it in the current moment, he lost both of his legs. Now, I'm going to take you guys back a little bit and explain to you how he got into the position that he is now. So now, Randy, good-hearted dude, man. I'm talking about one of them dudes that'll give you the shirt off his back good-hearted and kind-hearted dude. Granted, like I tell y'all, a lot of times, nine times out of 10, those habits and those traits that he got, they not accepted in poverty. They not accepted in the ghetto. Why? Because it's treacherous times. So a lot of times dudes only want treacherous people around you. Or if they see that you got these type of symptoms or characteristics, they tend to try to take advantage of you. And he didn't know how to do that. But he got a situation in his life where, you know, he want more out of life during this time. He watching dudes around his neighborhood hustle. They pulling up with the girls. They pulling up with the cars. They pulling up with the fly clothes and the jewels on. And now he looking at himself like, man, well, why, why I can't have none of that? So granted, he don't know how to hustle. He don't even know where to start to hustle. But he at the stage in his life where he know, listen, I'm going to hustle. And he was one of them type kids to where as though when he got involved in something, he over got involved. Meaning he dived in head first. He, he, he won in. He in for a penny, in for a pound. So now we got the dude around the way called Prime. Now, Prime, he the big man of the block. Granted, we won't get into his situation a little bit later. So now, when Randy put it in his mind that he going to come out and start hustling, he scraped him up a, uh, he scraped him up a couple of dollars for about 30 days. So now, when he get his money scraped up, he go see Prime. And now he tell Prime, look, man, I'm trying to get now. I'm trying to get me an eight ball. Granted, he don't even know what an eight ball is, how much an eight ball costs, how much he supposed to make off an eight ball. Or with an eight ball weight. He just know he's hand these terms and he hand dudes around his weight telling them, man, when you start hustling, that's the first thing you pose to grab. So now he goes up to Prime and he say that. So Prime like, what you got the money? He like, yeah, Randy goes in his pocket. He whip out the money. So when he go to hand it to him, Prime like, man, put your money in your pocket. Take a walk with me. So now they walks into the courtway. They walks into the building. When they walk into the building, he take him into one of the traps. When he take him into the trap, he go up in a ventilation closet. He grab a duffel bag out of it. Goes in the duffel bag now. He got 50 pack bundles, meaning there's 50 pills in each bundle. So he give him a 50 clip and tell him, look, man, 500. Sell each, each one of them for 10. Bring me back three. You keep two. So he gave him a good split, but this not going to last long. So he like, all right. So uh, Prime asked him, like, man, you know what to do. You know how to hustle, right? He like, no, not really, but I know I'm going to. So he like, look, I just told you. You sell each one of them for 10. You know what the junkie is, right? He like, yeah. So now 
Prime is going to school him into the game because he don't really care. He just got a bunch of youngins around, running around the way that's making money for him. And he always telling them, like, look, man, y'all juvenile. So if anything happened, y'all really not going to get no time for real, for real now. That's why I can't be out here going hand to hand. So I'm making sure y'all going to have some money in your pocket, be able to take care of yourself and your family. And I'm making sure I'm staying out of harm's way too. So he really trying to manipulate their mind, but he being honest with them and telling them, this is what's going on. This is why I'm doing this. This is how I'm doing this, this, that, and the third. So boom, Randy Lee back out. He like, all right, back now. Granted, he already got about $200 in his pocket. So if he was really a hustler, he would have just paid that or at least gave him a couple dollars. And then let's jump into story number two. Now, man, story number two, this situation here was real crazy to me because it show how people have put themselves in the craziest situations for the wildest reasons. So now, boom, we got this dude around the way now. This dude here, regular dude, laid back, calm, not aggressive, not violent. He don't even break the law for real. But sometimes that demeanor is not accepted in the hood and people not able to deal with not being accepted in the hood when they're in the hood. So boom, one day they outside for real. And just like the boys do, everybody out there cracking jokes, chilling, playing. And then words start getting a little personal. And one of the little dudes tell him, man, I don't even know what you laughing for, for real. You really soft. You really the softest one out the crew, for real. You ain't never did nothing. Ain't never been nowhere. You be letting people play with you, for real. People don't even look at you as a threat. So now he don't know how to deal with that because it really hit his heart. So now him not acting off of reality, he thinking and going off his emotions, for real. So now he's starting to be like, all right, that's right. You got it. You got it. Say less. Say less. And man, I tell y'all, he vowed from that day to just do pure craziness. I'm talking about things that ain't that ain't even make sense. So now where he messed up was is one, he made the decision to start doing crazy things to try to prove a point to somebody that don't even matter. Two, he wasn't able to control his emotions and he let that block calm and sense and now he started moving recklessly. Three, the reckless stuff that he started doing, he only doing it to people that he know for a fact is weaker than him because he already looked like he the weakest person on the totem pole, so he only can mess with somebody that's weaker than him to make him shine. It's like the dude that got to unscrew somebody light bulb just so they can shine. I never understood them type of people. So now he going around doing little petty dumb stuff, trying to pick on dudes that's really, really weak, square, square bound. So boom, one day he make the mistake of taking that ego and taking that mindset into the wrong territory and it backfired on him. So boom, one day he ran away for real. He goes down. A certain block to a cookout now and this cookout is live everybody out there bikes running up and down the street so now he sees somebody that he don't really know him but he know of him and then he trying to be like everybody that he around like you know when you down the cookout dudes might see one of their homeboys oh boy he might be riding a bike let me get a blast real quick he trying to be down he trying to do these same things so he grabbed a little dude up he right there on the side of the bike he like man bro can i get a blast real quick i ain't never really rode the bike granted this is probably why the dude told him no why would somebody give you a bike that costs 900 dollars and you ain't never rode a dirt bike before that's just asking for my bike to get broke so he like look man i would let you ride or i'll ride you but i ain't even really let nobody ride today i don't even feel like hearing anybody ask i ain't even trying to do it this fool, he goes off. Mind y'all, this is a cookout, a block full of people. He glow, he goes off, man. You's a B. What would you scared? What you saying? You don't know how to tell a man. No, all I'm saying is, man, I'm trying to get a ride. Now, why is he doing this? He trying to make it seem like he leaning on the dude because he been prior leading up to that week leading up to this day. He been leaning on Lord Chumps around his way, not knowing that don't extend outside your hood because one, everybody around the way know these dudes is chumps. And two, you ain't really did nothing. You took a little petty stuff around, but you ain't never really put the press on nobody. So boom, little dude on a dirt bike, he just balls his face up. Stop. He really puzzled like, you done lost your mind. He like, man, who the fuck you talking to? He like, what I'm talking to you? Now, when he do that, he like, buck that man, I'm talking to you. Whole time shorty on the bike, I'm guessing just out of reaction, he open hand and fire out on boom. Now, when he smacked him, yo just sitting right there grabbing his face. Now, everybody on the block just pause and look at him like, oh, so now you're right there. He walks off back to towards where his group of friends are. Like, are you right? Say less. Say less. Say less. So now Shorty that's on his bike. He puts his bike down. Say less. What? What's up? What's up? What's up? He walks off. I'm talking about the whole cookout get the clown in him. Embarrass him now. When he walks back to his homeboys, his homeboys like, man, what you walking over here for, man? Go back over there and uh, uh, fight him. No, man, come on. Let's get out of here, man. I'm going to go get the joint. No, we ain't ready to go get no joint. Go back over there and fight him. No, yo, come on. He walks to the car, sit in the car. The little dudes that he had to cook out with, they don't even walk to the car with him. They don't even want to be nowhere near because he just 
got embarrassed and you embarrassing us because you, what type of time you on? You just went over there, disrespected that man, got slapped in your face. Now you want to go to the car talking about going home and get the... These is why situations happen like that because people like that. Now, granted, if his homeboys wasn't on man time and they would have fed into that nonsense, went home, grabbed a joint, came back, made an episode all over what? You want to be down... You disrespecting another man, now you can't take the consequences on what come behind it. No, man, that's why you got to stop thinking, use your mind, man, and you got to hold your people that you around and you hanging with accountable. No, we ain't doing that. You was dead wrong. Go sit in the car and think about what you did. But with that being said, family, let's jump into story number three. Now, man, since we on this cookout, this was a wild day right here. So, boom, one day, baby pulls around my way. So, we out back, cool and chilling, smoking now slow. He... Uh, uh, over his people house now They having a cookout around their way He not around there with us So he calls Man where y'all at I'm like shit We all back What's going on He like man my people's having a cookout today Come over here I'm like alright that's a back Now Brandon slow That's family So he's saying his family having a cookout So why not We ain't doing nothing boy Might as well So baby like alright look I'm ready to shoot home real quick Tighten up changing my clothes Come back and grab you We can shoot over there to me slow I'm like alright back so he dips up, I shoot up in the house for real, get myself together, hop up in the shower, put my clothes on, roll me a blunt. Now I'm out back waiting for Bibby to pull back up. By the hour go by, Bib say, man, I'm on my way. All right, bet. Now when Bibby pull up for real, jump in the car, now we shoot to the bar real quick, grab a bottle. I already got the grass on deck, rolled a couple blunts to the car on the way over there. We call slow. I jump on the phone, hit slow boy, where you at? Send the address, boom. He sends the address when we leave the bar. We shoot over to the cookout. Now, when we arrive at the cookout, the neighborhood that the cookout in is like it's like a complex full of buildings, right? But it's one big gate. Like the big, the gate is is probably as big as this cell opening from here to here. So the the gate opening leads into a block, a main street, and then alongside of the, uh, this block is just block at the block at the block. So it's like a real real open environment. So boom, when we pull up. The, the main block is filled with cars. It's a big cookout. Everybody right there. You can't even find nowhere to park. So now we got to park two blocks over. Boom. We spin around the bend, park the car, jump out. Now we got to walk two blocks back over onto the complex. Boom. We get in the complex. We're slow at slow meters right there at the gate. He pull us in, make the introductions, introduces the everybody. Boom. Step over there. Now we cool and chill and vibe and smoke and grab a little drink. By the hour or two, get into it. I grab me a plate. Boom, come back, another hour go by, phone go off. So now when the phone go off, it's a play. So I tell him, like, look, man, I got to go hit a play real quick. You want to ride me up there? He like, yeah, because I got a play waiting for me too. So now just as we say this, y'all, I turn around. I'm like, all right, where's Slow? We ready to tell Slow we ready to dip. So as we turn around, it's a little dude at the gate for real. I don't, I didn't know who he was at the beginning of the cookout, but after this situation, I learned who he was. So he just sitting right there at the gate. All I hear is him say, man, that's them. They coming down. They blitzing. They blitzing. It's like 10 cars, 10 cars. So when I turn around, all you see is five police cars coming from the top of the street, five police cars coming from the bottom of the street. And at the same time, they really start merging into the gate. Boom. As soon as I see that, I tell him, come on. Boom. Now, when I turn around, it's a building behind us for real. So boom, we turns around, breaks into the building. Now, the building split into two ways. You can go up the steps and start going into the, the stairwell, or you can go down the steps and it lead into a backyard, like it just opening behind the um, apartment complex. But it's a big gate alongside behind the behind the complex. Boom. We break through the bottom. I tell him, come on, we're going to jump the fence. Now, the fence is not like a regular gate. It's like metal black balls for real. So you're going to have to really get a grip and like pull yourself up boom pulls ourselves up jump over now when we jump over on the other side of the fence nothing but woods but it's like a little pathway it's a little split i'm like come on i can hear literally hear people scattering everybody running like roaches through the projects or the complex whatever it is boom you can hear the cars pulling in you hear time out jumping out freeze get on the ground don't move don't move get him get him Everybody just scattering. So, boom. I, I'm hearing this as we jump in the fence running through the woods. We break through the woods for about five, six minutes now. When we come out to exit to exit out the woods, we land, like, behind some school. It's like all you see is a school building and a big old hill. So, boom, we come out, though, but it ain't nobody following us. So, I'm like, come on, we got to walk to the main street. So, it's like, you know what I mean? We we, we want any round there. We just going to walk like we regular. Take your hat off. We had a jail. Take that off. Boom. So, now we just walking regular for real. So, now I'm like, yo, how we get back to the car? But... Uh, Slow had already texted us the address, so I'm like, look, yo, we're going to have to call an Uber back to the car. Boom. Calls the Uber. Wait for, we, we stopped at a gas station first. Once we walking up the street, boom, pulls into the, uh, walks into the gas station for real chill right there for a little minute. Called the Uber from the gas station. Caught the Uber from the gas station back to the block. Now, when we get back to the block, to the car, mind y'all, we had already parked two blocks away from 
where the cookout was at because it was it was too much traffic right there. So boom, we jumps in the car, but we gotta come back to leave out. Man, when we spun down the first block that we came that we originally tried to park on, God, good thing we didn't because it was so many cars. Man, it's like 30 people just in the ground in cuffs, zip wires, time out, just going through the scene of the crime. I'm like, oh my lord, slow. Don't invite me to no cookouts, man. So now when we in the car, we trying to hit slow. He not answering his phone. Come to find out the next morning when he called us, he ended up getting grabbed up for something that wasn't his, but they end up giving him his own recall on the situation. But that whole little thing right there just was wild, man. I'm like, nope, ain't attending no more invites to the cookouts. That's dead. But with that being said, family, you know what it is. Thank y'all for riding with me. Well, you know you feel a lot. Then with your boy stories with V. At this time, family, you already know what I need y'all to do for me. Check your status one more time. Make sure you like, share, comment, smash that subscribe button. We'll be at 100K in no time, man. B squad or no squad, make sure y'all join the membership, man. If you would like to support the channel through Cash App, boom, it's listed right there. Make sure y'all continue to like the video, share the video. Comment on the video. We are dominating, man. I love y'all from the bottom of my heart. We're going to continue to go up. Make sure y'all continue to tell a friend to tell a friend. Stories with V is the family they need to be a part of, man. It's V Squad or no squad. It's V Mo. We out. Let's go. <laughs>